Le miodisopsie, dette anche mosche volanti, sono un sintomo molto molto... Eye floaters, or miodisopsia. Floaters, also called flying flies, in Latin, are a very frequent symptom that leads patients to worry and prompts them to go for an eye examination. Floaters can be divided, from an anatomopathological point of view, into benign floaters, which are these small flies, small cobwebs, floating opacities within the visual field that a patient sees are because of the normal imperfection of the vitreous gel. The eye is a sphere inside which there is a gel that fills it, and this gel is called the vitreous. Although it is almost perfect and being made up of 99% water, it can have imperfections. Even the most perfect vitreous of a healthy subject has some small moving body. These imperfections can be perceived by the patient, especially when looking at the sky in conditions of great brightness or looking at a white surface. These small floaters are absolutely benign and do not cause any kind of problem. They can increase in the course of life and even degenerate. That is, the vitreous body, at a certain point as we go along in the years, tends to dehydrate and therefore to collapse on itself. The vitreous tends to detach from the retina in the back, then on the central retina, the one used to see which is called macula and on the optic nerve. The vitreous, depending on how it detaches from the retinal surface, the time it takes to detach and whether it is a very acute event or slowed down over time, can cause symptoms but also damage. That is, a vitreous detached acutely can cause hemorrhages on the retinal surface and can cause ruptures on the vitreous base, therefore on the front of the eye. The patient presents to the ophthalmologist with acute symptoms, which are having important floaters. Not all are seen, but decidedly more important because they can partially obscure the field of view. This patient must be carefully examined by the ophthalmologist so as to be able to understand what are the relationships of the vitreous with the retina. So, if a retinal rupture has formed, the patient must be stopped immediately and treated with the argon laser. The retina and the patient himself must be placed in position for a few days so that he cannot move and the laser can take effect and glue the retina. If there are no alterations of the retina, such as tears or peripheral holes, the surface of the central retina and the macula must be analyzed correctly and not simply with ophthalmoscopy with the use of OCT in order to understand what the intimate relationships are of the retinal surface with the vitreous. OCT allows us to understand if the vitreous is detached on the head of the optic nerve, on the fovea, that is, on the central area of the retina, or if it is detached on the macula and which of these three modalities is in place.